Hey there, Scipio here, and I want to give a quick tip on something that seems to be very confusing for a lot of new uh, RC airplane builders, and that is the proper direction uh, for the prop to face, whether it be a pusher or a tractor style uh, airplane. Uh, it seems like a, a lot of people are having a hard time grasping the proper direction of a propeller. So if you're flying your plane, let's say I'm building a, a Bixler 2 right now, if you're flying your Bixler and it feels like it's woefully underpowered, it seems like, just from my research on the internet, that a lot of those people perhaps may have their propeller on backwards or their motor actually spinning in the wrong direction. So I'm going to talk about that really quick. Uh, picture's worth a thousand words. There's a lot of great descriptions on the internet, but the reality of it is sometimes a quick video is what it takes to just kind of bring it all together in your head. So uh, here's a couple things. Uh, first of all, I want to point out that it's not only the prop positioning, whether you know it's facing forwards or backwards, but it's also the, uh, the direction of the motor, whether it's clockwise or counterclockwise. So I'm going to talk about both components. But first, I just want to talk about some tips on how to make sure you're getting your propeller facing in the right direction. So what I have here are two propellers. Um, they're actually the same size propellers. They're 7 by 5 uh, propellers. One of them is the stock uh, propeller that came with my Bixler 2 kit. And then the other one is an APC uh, propeller, which is actually a pusher propeller. So in the middle of all this, I'm also going to explain the difference between the pusher and the standard propeller. So I am not going to get into aerodynamics and physics as it relates to how propellers generate thrust through the same principles of lift that are used in an airplane wing. Uh, but quite simply, I'm just going to show you kind of what you need to know to make sure you get it right. And you've heard it probably said or seen it on the internet that there's a spoon uh, of the propeller, kind of a cupping uh, shape versus a, uh, you know, convex versus concave. Um, you know, let's take a look at a spoon and see the differences here. So as you can see with this spoon, if I tilt it, you can see on this propeller a very similar shape. And if I roll it over, you can see um, how it curves the same sort of a way. So what you want is the bottom of the spoon this larger curved shape to be facing forward on the aircraft because um, what it's going to do is it's going to capture that uh, and scoop so if you think of it as scooping or shoveling that's one thing but regardless just take a look at this propeller and and you know and I'm talking about these little smaller um, uh, like off the Bixler which is what I'm working on now I'm sure that other propellers aren't quite as easy to identify um, but these uh, have a fairly uh, significant spoon shape to them and then you just want to make sure that, that uh, the bottom of the spoon is facing forward on the aircraft. Regardless of whether you're doing a tractor prop, a, a forward mounted uh, motor, or a, or a pusher like on the Bixler. Here's an even larger prop. This is an 8x4. So it's a little bit longer overall, but has less pitch. Uh, but you can still see that spoon. So you can see this would be the, uh, the serial side. And not. It's a little less. Uh, it's a little more subtle. Uh, the more flat the prop is, but you can see it there. So I guess what you can think about it is eat your cereal in the back. So uh, if the part that you would uh, you would uh, put your cereal in have that face in the rear of the the plane. Anyway, pretty lame. I told you this is just me trying to give uh, a bunch of different ideas to help things click in people's heads. So a lot of times you'll hear about the direction of the numbers or letters. Um, so, uh, in this case, this is an APC, um, and the uh, numbers and letters would actually face forward of the aircraft. It doesn't matter how they face against the motor, because that's going to differ depending on your installation. But in this case, you want them facing the front of the aircraft. So, if you are on a pusher prop, uh, where, where your uh, motor is facing the back, like on the Bixler, you're going to want the numbers facing into the motor because that's where the front of the aircraft is. If you're on a tractor plane where the motor's in the front, you're going to want the numbers facing away from the motor. So don't get hung up on where the motor positioning is in relation to the numbers. Uh, but in this case, uh, the numbers face the front, and I know that because of the curvature of the prop tells me so. Now, not all props are probably going to be the same. So you can use this as a starting guide, but I wouldn't depend on it absolutely. All right, so now that we've talked about which way the propeller faces 
uh, when it's installed on the plane, we need to talk a little bit about motor direction. Um, now, if you look at this, it looks a lot like a wing because that's really what it is. It's a little spinning wing. And just like on a wing of an airplane, there's a little bit of a swoop to it that you can see that swoops backwards. In fact, if you look at the Bixler wing, you'll notice a very similar swooping shape. Okay, The swoop, the point, points back on the Bixler uh, airplane. And the same thing is going to happen here with the rotation of the uh, propeller. So if you take this wing shape, and then now you bring it up so that it's uh, in a more vertical orientation like the propeller and just look at the direction that that would need to go to maintain that swoop going back then you've figured out your motor direction so in this case if uh, if this was mounted on the Bixler and the front of the plane is here uh, we're standing at the front of the plane we're gonna want the motor to turn in a clockwise direction as seen from the front and that's gonna be the orientation uh, and the motor direction of this particular propeller on the Bixler. All right, so here's one more lame illustration to help bring it all together. Um, I have an M&M. &M. Uh, I don't know what this relates to, but let's assume that M&M &M is air, and we want to move it and push it uh, through our propeller in a most efficient fashion. If I have this thing upside down, which, by the way, as you can see, uh, it does lay differently... Um, on, on the different directions. But let's say I had this facing this way. Um, you can see it kind of just pushes that. It doesn't capture that M&M. &M. It kind of just pushes it around. If I spin it the other way, the same thing. It's just pushing it around. But look what happens when I flip it over and, uh, and spin it in a proper direction. It actually captures the M&M, right? So if you think of that capturing air, that might be helpful uh, as an illustration. It's not really how it works. Uh, although maybe to some degree it does. Uh, if I spin it backwards, it does not capture it. It just pushes it around. So that's not very efficient. So if I find the, the position where I can put the propeller flat on the ground and spin it and grab that M&M, &M, then I've also determined the proper uh, position that's facing forward as well as the proper direction that I want it to spin. And then as long as I set it up on the motor that way and on the airplane, uh, it's going to work fine. So if all else, try using the M&M &M trick. If you're, if you're confused about um, how to make everything work right, um, try that, and that may be, uh, help you out a little bit. So two quick things. Uh, first is uh, the difference just fundamentally in the, uh, in the quality of the stock Hobby King uh, prop. You can see how bendy and flexible this is. Uh, my understanding is that uh, is an efficiency killer. Uh, which is why I immediately went with a APC prop, and it's much stiffer. Um, I don't know if you can see this on the video, but it is a much stiffer composite material and, uh, and should be a lot more efficient because of it. You shouldn't lose a lot of lift or thrust, so to speak, um, just in the movement of the prop itself. The other thing is you have one is a pusher and one is a standard prop. Now, a pusher and standard prop can both be used in this application, uh, and I have both here. What's the fundamental difference? Well, ideally, uh, the difference is the direction that the motor spins when it's mounted. If you can see, both of them have the numbers facing forward with the, uh, you know, the serial in the back, the serial side of the spoon in the back, so this is how they would mount on the plane. But if you look at the, the wing tips that I talked about earlier, they're in opposite directions, which means one of them is going to spin in this direction, and this one's going to spin in this direction. So the difference in a pusher prop and a standard prop has nothing to do with which side the numbers face on or which way the, the propeller faces on the airplane. It has only to do with which direction the motor turns after it's been installed. Um, and the reason of that is uh, if you have a standard prop uh, set in a pusher orientation, which means the motor is in the back of the plane, uh, the direction of the motor in relation to uh, the direction you want the prop to spin, it's actually in a position, in this case it would be if we're in the front of the uh, front of the uh, airplane, the motor would be spinning in a counterclockwise direction, just like that. Well, that's also uh, the direction you spin the, the adapter nut on. So what happens is people are finding that they will loosen up over time if not careful. It'll kind of like unspin itself and, and loosen up a little bit. So the reason we have a pusher prop is everything is the same as far as the direction the uh, the prop faces. We just reverse the motor. Now the motor spins this way to spin properly, 
and it's spinning against the rotation of that adapter nut so it keeps it snug. And that's really it. Um, there may be something more to it that I don't know about, but that's probably more at advanced level. But that's why there's a pusher prop and a standard prop. And to be honest with you, I thought it was more of you know the direction of the numbers, or maybe it it goes on differently. No, every all those principles are the same between the pusher and the standard. It's just which direction the motor spins after you have it installed. So as long as you keep this wing tip in mind and watch how that spins uh, and how you want that, you'll know which direction to spin it. I hope this was helpful for you. Um, again, it was one of those things I was kind of struggling with understanding, uh, and it took me getting both of these types of props in hand to really put it together. And then I was just kind of thinking of a way to visualize it in my own head and make sure I understood what I was doing, and that's where the M&M &M trick came in. Uh, so you can see, um, if that helps me, maybe it'll help one other person out there, and that makes all this worth it. So thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one.